Hello, everyone. So thank you so much, continuously, the introduction of Buddhist, Buddhism. So before I actually sit at the class, I will say something. Uh, most of our, us who are here, you know, we are interested in learning Dharma, as well as we are very much interested practice of Dharma. So before we really practice any kinds of Dharma, it is so important to learn how to practice the Dharma. As a Buddhist, we have a lot of confusion about Dharma. Also we have a lot of confusion how to practice Dharma. Also we have very difficulties lot of difficulties to recognize, realize what does mean Dharma. So we have a lot of confusion when we think about Dharmas because we have so many, we, we believe so many things. <coughs> Some beliefs which is we have, we just learn from someone. Some beliefs we learn based on book. Some beliefs we learn from, you know, master and gurus. Also, some belief we just create by our own mind. So that's why we have a lot of confusion. In order to clarify the confusions, all the confusions, then we really need to study Dharma. Without studying Dharma, you don't understand. Without understand, without having the right understanding of Dharma, you cannot practice the Dharma. Even though you think, you know, I have been practicing Dharma, you are not. Because you are not really able to understand the Dharma. So, the step number one, so important to study the Dharma. When you study the Dharma, you need to get the right book which is written by the person who have who had or who have the complete knowledge of dharma the complete knowledge mean the person who wrote about dharma they must have a good understanding of theravada's practices then sutra mahayan practices as well as Vajrayan practices. If the person has a complete knowledge, then the person can write the right book. So we must find the right book which is we going to study. When you when we study Dharma, there you know we always have a problem to understand the meaning. Actually understanding meaning is not that difficult. For example, when you study about Bodhicitta, you can understand what does mean Bodhicitta. But when you practice the Dharma, Bodhicitta, then there are a lot of difficulties always there. So study Dharma. When you practice Dharma, you must practice continuously until you are mind very familiar with the practices. Second, so before we you know, practice Dharma, first should think, do I need to study Dharma? Do I need to believe in Dharma? If so, what benefit I can get? You know, after studying Dharma, after practice the Dharma. When you think about the, these two things, then you really going to have a, you know the strong, the pure motivation to study Dharma. Also, you can see what are you going to achieve after you study, after you, you know, practice the Dharma? The two questions you should always ask every day by yourself. Then, uh, number third, number three is another very important. Right now, you know, so we have a very good technology. When you Google about 
practice of Dharma, there are so many you know, things you can find from Google. Most of the thing which is put in the Google, it is not really put it by the person who completely knows Dharma, who has a complete who has a good experience of Dharma. So you should not, you know, collect all the things which is, you know, find from Google. So for example, when you study, when you ask a question, what does mean in a Buddhism? There's a, you know, many different answers you can find. Then you then you'd have a lot of confusion. So you must, you know, get a right book, read continuously, try to understand. If you don't understand, you should not just keep that doubt in your mind, you must ask your Dharma friends who has a knowledge, who has experience. And the uh, Tibetan Buddhist center is just, is just, you know, the Dharma class, which is not really, you know, teaching Dharma. And I'm here, not, I'm not here for as a guru, as a master. I'm always be happy to be here as a Saturday partner. So you should not have any hesitation to ask question. You should not have any hesitation to you know criticize about what I teach you. So each time when we have a class, you must have a question answer. The next month, I will sit down to teach Lamrim. So I prefer to use the Lamrim Chemo written by Tsongkhapa. So what I think about how to teach? So. Everybody must have the book. So then I can say you must read, you know, page 10 every class. So you read the page 10 or 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, or sometimes you need to read, you know, 20 pages. After you read, read the 20 pages, you need to make a summarize. What is the main point within the 20 pages or 10 pages? After you have a summary summarized in your mind, the summarize you always keep in your mind. So when you practice the Lamrim, you must practice step by step. You should not hurry to practice the next step before you, you know, very familiar with the first step. So overall, you know, uh, generally it is so important to learn the basic, very basic things before you study Lamrim. For example, we must know the basic history of Buddhism. Second, we, we must know, so we have a two different Buddhist traditions, Theravada tradition, you know, like Sanskrit tradition or Mahayan traditions. Third, we must know, before you study Lamrim, you must know the two truths, four noble truths, twelve links and dependence. As well as you must know, you know, the 16th uh, characteristic of Four Noble Truths. Then another very important as a Buddhist. We, you know, uh, we believe in past life, also we believe in next life. The, the belief which is we have about the next life and the previous life the belief is the, you know, the, the vision we believe in next and next life and this life is not really stable. We just believe based on books or based on you know what other people says. So we must study about you know the previous life and next life. How we can study? So today I teach you the basic knowledge about the phenomena. Then we can link with our next life and the previous life. So also, you know, many of never attend, uh, we call the, the basic knowledge about phenomena, which is dura. When I explain you, you thinking, you think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining you useless thing. You should not think this way. For example, study about the science is not easy. There's so many different, you know, area, fields. They cannot put together in one field. In Buddhist philosophy, it's very simple to put all the, you know, the subjects, all the different areas. For example, I just put here, you know, the one circle. 
put into that divide, then this is totally minus. This means the circle you just think about is, you know, selflessness. Selflessness. So, selflessness. Okay, all phenomena, existent or non-existent, all phenomena, all, you know, non-existent things, we said selflessness. What does mean selflessness mean? So everybody is going to agree, this is Magapan. So, in generally, when we say, what is this? This is a marker pen, this is a pen, right? It's a pen. When we think about the pen, how the pen is, exists, what does mean, you know, pen and pencil? If you study very precisely, you know, each part of this, you know, marker pen, you cannot really find this part is marker pen. You cannot find where is the pen, what does mean pen. For example, this is the lid. So this is the, you know, uh, the lower part of the pen. So this is what you call the upper pen of the pen. So that means if you study very precisely all phenomena, you cannot find the phenomena exists from the, you know, from itself. That's what we call selflessness. When Buddha talked about the Four Noble Truths, first he talked about the truth of suffering. When, we, when he explained the truth of suffering very precisely, first he explained impermanence, then suffering, then selflessness, then emptiness. This means any phenomena, permanent or impermanent, good or bad, any kinds of phenomena is there, but they are not exist from their own sight. That's what we call selflessness. The selflessness we can divide into two group, two groups. This is existent phenomena. Other side is non-existent phenomena. Clear? So important number one, all phenomena include non-existent things, you know, are selflessness. The selflessness for the phenomena we can put into two categories. Something exists, something non-existent. Clear? Then look at this is a, we put, I put the like minus men. There's no any categories. It's totally zero. No, what is this side? Existent phenomena. Clear? Existent phenomena we can divide into let's say into two. Look, I go in the better way. I'm not really good in the writing. Is it permanent? Oh, okay, so I use this one. Okay. So the existing phenomena, there are two categories. Clear? Existing phenomena you can divide into two. We can put permanent, impermanent. Okay, permanent phenomena, impermanent phenomena. Clear? Okay. So when we when you read a book about you know Buddhist Buddhism or Buddhist philosophy, sometimes you have a lot of confusion because sometimes sometimes we can use the you know uh, 
existent phenomena also object of knowledge also existent phenomena they are synonymous you can call object of knowledge existent phenomena right it says actually you know everything is the same so within the existent phenomena how many categories there are two categories what are they permanent and impermanent so important within the permanent you can put into you know two categories okay that mean all phenomena are divided into two permanent impermanent within the permanent phenomena you can divide into two so before i explain what are the two now is so important topic which is permanent phenomena which is impermanent phenomena for example you know this center is impermanent we everybody are are impermanent so so what what is the permanent phenomena i think some of you you know have been studying uh, the uh, what you called nalanda yeah so what what is the example of the permanent phenomena space okay give me five example space just think about or you can say there's not really permanent phenomena all phenomena are impermanent also you can say that way you don't have to accept what buddha said right okay space number 1 number 2 emptiness number 3 selflessness okay so for example space the meaning or the definition of space is big difference between buddhist buddhism and scientist science make sure according to science you know between you know these walls and this body is just empty space they call this is space but a god into buddhist philosophy is no we don't you know name space so for example that easy example i can give you your yeah, emptiness emptiness is permanent phenomena now emptiness can be you know sometimes somewhere permanent not everywhere permanent <coughs> there's a one permanent phenomena which is exists everywhere is permanent every time for example space do you think the space is everywhere ha huh? do you think space is everywhere or you don't you think space is not everywhere what do you think space is everywhere if, if there is no space then there is not any phenomena thought is impermanent is not permanent mental image mental image is still impermanent at the moment it is impermanent otherwise you can have a lot of confusion okay so the space is permanent is permanent everywhere is is exists everywhere the emptiness is permanent is exists everywhere where is the phenomena there is a emptiness where is the emptiness there is a phenomena that mean emptiness is permanent space is permanent is it permanent everywhere every time so this mean one permanent is 
you know, permanent, everywhere, every time. There's a, another permanent phenomena, which is not, not permanent everywhere, every time. Clear? Permanent, you can divide into two. Okay. Everywhere, every time, permanent phenomena. Sometimes, somewhere, permanent phenomena. So can you think about you know, some permanent phenomena is permanent, sometime permanent, somewhere permanent, not everywhere, every time permanent. Can you think? The for example is, you know, emptiness of this, this, this center, emptiness of this center. So the emptiness of the center is exists only here. It is permanent here. It is not permanent in the you know, Mustafa Center. Right? It is not permanent everywhere. It is not permanent in the Mustafa Center because this emptiness of the center is not exists in the Mustafa. That means it is permanent somewhere, sometime. Why sometime? Where the center exists, the emptiness of, center is, emptiness of the center is, exists. Where the center is, you know, uh, destroyed, the, where there's no center, no more there, then the emptiness of the center is no more there. You can see when the, for example, the center is changed, the emptiness of the center is changed. But very important, what you must know, the emptiness of the center is not impermanent, but still this can change. Bit different, bit funny, right? We say it's change, but we don't name impermanent. No, everybody must know must know what does mean impermanent. Clear? This means the phenomena which is arise arise from causing the condition, those phenomena are impermanent. Clear? The, you know, those phenomena which is arise from causes and condition, those phenomena are impermanent. Yes? Very good. The center can change momentarily, moment by moment. That means the center is changing momentarily because the center is impermanent. The center is changing momentarily. At the same time, the emptiness of center is also changing momentarily. But the sen emptiness of center is still permanent. Why? She raised the question. Now I'll ask you a question for everybody. Why the center is changing momentarily? Why? Huh? Okay, uh, for example, I asked the question, why the center is, you know, changing momentarily? Because somebody says center is impermanent. Why center is impermanent? Then you can go to say it's changing momentarily. It's not a good answer. Do you remember the example? Very funny example I give you. In Tibet, there was a person. He has a gun. Somehow, you know, during the he traveling somewhere, you know, walking, going here and there, he lost. He he, he lost his gun. Then somebody asks, "Do you remember where did you lose your gun?" They say, "I lost my gun where I pee." Do you remember where did you pee? I pee where I lost my gun. <laughs> right? That means look at it. go to the Buddhist philosophy. The number one, you can you can agree, you know, the condition phenomena, which is you know the phenomena which is arise from causes condition can be permanent, or you can say not necessarily 
not necessarily to be impermanent. You can say it can be permanent. If you say the phenomena which is arises, you know, through causing condition, it is impermanent, then I say why it is be impermanent? Right? Why things are changing momentarily? Why? For example, when, you know, like, let's say, you know, 40 years ago, you know, most of us, like a, a child, no, be we are old. Why we have all the changes? Huh? Time. Why time is changing? Why time is changing? The the phenomena, you know, she says it is a time is changing. The time is not independent phenomena, right? It time is depend on certain conditions, certain phenomena. For example, there's a one car, car one car runs so fast the car can reach, can reach to the destination within a short moment. So one car, you know, runs very slowly, they can reach to the destination quite a long time after. The answer here, why, you know, the condition phenomena changing momentarily, we cannot stop the changing. Because, okay, for example, the easy example I can give you, I do this Christy here. I put my glass, use my glass. Okay. Look at the glass case is moving, right? It's moving. Why is it moving? My hand is moving. My why my hand is moving? My thoughts is moving. I thought I should move my hands. There's no all phenomena changing momentarily. Because their cause and condition is changing momentarily. That's why the result also changing momentarily. That's why the Tibet, you know, Tibet, Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist sense is changing momentarily because their cause and conditions are changing momentarily. The emptiness of the center is changing, not, the, they are, it, it, not changing the you know, cause and condition of the emptiness. It's changing because the basis of the emptiness of the center. For example, emptiness is the, you know, uh, kind of quality or characteristic of the center. The center is the basis. When the center change, the emptiness of the center change. But the center is not the cause and con causes cause and condition of the emptiness of the deep center. That's my answer for you. Center is, is impermanent because it's changing by their own and causes condition. So emptiness of the center is not impermanence because it's not ch you know, changing by their cause and condition. Okay? That means permanent phenomena, you can think there's a two types. Some permanent is a, you know, uh, permanent everywhere, every time. For example, space. For example, emptiness. There's another permanent phenomena. It's not permanent every time, everywhere. For example, emptiness of the TBC, emptiness of your body, emptiness of your mind. Those are permanent, not permanent every time, everywhere. This is simple. And next, you're going to go, you know, more uh, complicated. So this is permanent. This is impermanent. Clear? No impermanent. We can divide into three. Okay, it's so important. Now everybody just you know think about okay, all phenomena what we call we call selflessness. Also non-existent phenomena also we call selflessness. Selflessness we can divide into. How many categories? Two. What are they? Existent, non-existent. Existent we can divide into two. What are they? Permanent, impermanent. Permanent we can still divide into two. What are they? Sometime permanent, you know, somewhere, somewhere permanent. Every time permanent, everywhere permanent. Second, 
we, we impermanent phenomena, we can divide into three categories. Three categories. What are they? Form, consciousness, non-associated formation. Non-associated formation. Okay? Number one, form. Number two, consciousness. Number three, non-associated formation. Just keep in your mind. Now I will ask you a question, okay, everybody. Remember, impermanent phenomena, you can divide into how many categories? Three. What are they? Form, consciousness, non-associated formation. Do you think there's a, another one phenomena which is not included into three of them? Just think about Do you think all impermanent phenomena you can include into three of them? Can be form, can be consciousness, can be non acidic formation. Do you think there's another? Uh, uh, can you agree with me or not? But what is non formation? Yeah, very good question. For example, human being. Human being. Okay? You should not make, uh, have a confusion, okay? We have consciousness, but we are not consciousness. Right? We have a mind, we are not a mind. So, human being is non associated formation because it is not included into form, neither included into consciousness. That's what we call non associated formation. So, now everybody are you going to agree with me? Uh, in Burma, all impermanent phenomena include into three you know, categories, form, consciousness, non-city formation. Are you agree with me or not? Huh? Who are not going to agree with me? Then you have to debate. <laughs> okay. Then I will raise your question. If everybody say yes, if the phenomena is, you know, impermanent, must be form, must be consciousness, must be, must be no city formation. Clear? Then what is the impermanent? Impermanent is including to which phenomena? Form, consciousness, no city formation. Impermanent itself. Huh? Okay. So, what about the time? Time is not. Do, do you do you think time, time is a form? Consciousness? No city formation? Yes, time. Okay, so number one, okay, here the form, okay, also we can say impermanent phenomena. Also we can say conditioned phenomena. We can say functional phenomena. Also we can call cause, conditions, those are synonymous. Impermanent, when impermanence, right, impermanence, condition phenomena, functional phenomena, cause, condition, those are synonymous. That's why when you read a book, sometimes you say, you know, you know conditional phenomena, sometimes you use impermanent phenomena, sometimes you use functional phenomena, sometimes you use cause and condition, those are synonymous. Okay, please keep in your mind. This means this marker pen is impermanent. 
This Markov pen is condition phenomena. Why it is impermanent? It is changing momentarily. Why it is changing momentarily? Because it, its own cause and condition is changing momentarily. That's why the pen is changing momentarily. Why it is condition phenomena? Because it is, exists based on causes and condition. That's what we call condition phenomena. Why you call functional phenomena? The pen has a particular function. What is this? To, you know, writing is the function of the pen. For example, you know, drinking water, eating, this, all the things we call functional phenomena. Also, why you call this is cause? Cause, because it can, this pen can, you know, produce their own result. Right? This is cause because it has a your own result. This is a you know effect because it errors from cause and condition. That means this pen is condition, cause, this uh, the pen is the result. That means it's a synonymous, okay? Impermanent, condition, phenomena, functional phenomena, cause, condition, result. Those are synonymous. Now you can just think simply, you know, all condition phenomena are impermanent. All condition phenomena are functional phenomena. All condition phenomena are cause. All con condition phenomena are condition. All functional phenomena are result. That means now you think yourself, I am impermanent. I am condition phenomena. I am functional phenomena. I am cause. I am condition. I am result. Why you are result? Why you are result? You are result. The previous yesterday, you know, you you have a today. You can think you have a minute. You have a minute duration. Yesterday you was you were exist. You are exist today because you are produced by yesterday. Your yesterday you right. That's why you can call you know result. Condition, cause and condition. Now, I go with... The form. Okay, sometimes they use, they use form. Sometimes they use the matter. Matter, right? Matter. The form you can divide into two. What are they? Outer phenomena, inner phenomena, uh, sorry, outer form, inner form. Clear? That means, you know, f no, when you think of a form, there's only two types. Outer phenomena, inner phenomena. phenomena. So, out outer form, inner form. Okay, now we repeat. Self phenomena divide into how many categories? Two. What are they? Ex existent and non existent. Existent divide into how many? Two. What are they? Impermanent. Permanent divide into how many categories? Two. What are they? Every time, permanent, sometimes, somewhere. So, example you must know. What are the, what, what is the example of everywhere, every time permanent phenomena? Emptiness. That means you should think emptiness is everywhere. Always there. Second, impermanent divide into how many categories? Three. What are they? Form, consciousness, no city formation. Okay. So what is, the, what is the example of the form? Our body. What is the example of consciousness? Our mind. What is the example of uh, uh, no city formation? Me. Right? Me. Human being. You know, Buddha Shakyamuni, Amida Buddha, Manjushiri. You know, those are no city formation. So, now another important one, look at, 
So form we can divide into two. Outdoor, outdoor form, inner form. Now look at, okay, if something is form, B form, something, you know, B form must be impermanent. Okay, impermanent. Something is impermanent must be existing phenomena. Okay, form must be, you know, outer form or inner form, either must be form. Something be form must be impermanent. You know, something is permanent must be existing phenomena. Existing phenomena must be selflessness. So, for example, you know, it's look like a road. There's a one road, then the, the, road, the road can divide into three. If the car is running from here, it can be go this road, can be go middle road, can be go, you know, the right road. Not necessarily going to this road. When the car coming from this side, there's going only one direction, because one way. It looks like one way, huh? So, order from, you know, something be inner form must be be form. Be form necessarily impermanent. Be impermanent must be phenomena. Be phenomena must be selflessness. Same thing, you know, something be, you know, permanent must be phenomena. The thing, you know, the, if something be phenomena, not necessarily permanent or can be impermanent, right? So we have a two types of form, inner and outer. So the inner form, we can divide into five, five aggregates, five aggregates. Oh, if I use some you know, aggregates, I think better to use uh, five power, ice power, nose power, air power, tongue power, then body power. When I say power, it's different. For example, it's okay, it's okay. It's still function. <laughs> Functional, 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So I will draw a eyes, you know, like like this eyes, right? When you look at eyes, we have so many parts. You know, uh, so even though when you open the, you know, the eyes ball, when you go in the center of the eyes ball, you can see there's a so small object. Small object, the nature is so clear, look like crystal. The, the, the object within in our eyes organ, there's a particular object is so clear, look like the crystal. This, this part of phenomena we call eyes power or eyes organ. We are not talking the go whole thing is eyes organ. Why we call the eyes is you know, organ is inner phenomena. Why not outer phenomena? Why this table is outer phenomena? Why not this table is inner phenomena? Why? Look at somebody, you know, touch your eyes, you can feel something. You can feel. This means that your eyes organ or eyes power is, you know, uh, hold, hold by feeling whole by mind, consciousness. That's what we call inner form. You know, when we touch this table, the table doesn't have any feeling. That means this table includes into the outer phenomena. Okay? Simply, inner phenomena we can divide into five. 
five. Okay, eyes are organ, nose, air, tongue, body. And outdoor phenomena, if we can divide into two. Two. What are they? Shape and color. Shape and color. So we just stop, you know, uh, there about the form. Now we go with the consciousness. Is that it true? He says also true. Now it's so important to learn about the mind or consciousness. Because we believe in next life, also we believe in the previous life, right? Believe. When you study about cause and condition, cause and condition, it's so important to learn the cause has a two types. For example, when you grow mango tree, mango tree, what do you need? You must need the mango seeds. You know, the, the bone. You, when you open the mango, you can see the bone inside. The bone is the mango seeds. The second what you need, we need a soil, water, heat. we need so many things. We need a land, we need a soil, we need a water. The soil, the water, you know, the land, the person who put the seeds in the, on the, in the ground, those are what we call secondary cause. Secondary cause. The mango seeds is primary cause. This means all condition phenomena must have a two types of cause. One is primary cause, one is secondary cause. Now we think about our life. We have a body, right? We have a body, we have a mind. So when we think about the body, it has a two types of cause. One is a primary cause, one is the secondary cause. So what is the primary cause of our, our body? The primary, the, the, the root of the, our, our body. Yeah, the X, in, uh, X and span is the primary cause of our body. So it is everybody except, even the modern science, scientists also accept our human body, you know, our, our body, you know, come from our parents. There's no any argument. Still, when we think about the body, some scientists ex simply just, they, you know, talk about the gross body. The gross body. They don't talk, we never talk about the subtle body. Another question, so when, you know, let's say, you know, there was a previous life. So we enter into mother womb, right, mother womb. When we enter, you know, just before we enter into mother womb, did we have a body or not? Right? So once we enter in the mother womb, then, you know, the, the red cell and white cell, we use the red cell and white cell. The red cell, white cell, you know, come together, then start out this body. Before we enter, did we have a body or not? Huh? No. This, this part is very important. You must learn, you must raise question, you must think. Because look at, we believe next life. How, who are really going next life? When we die, we bo our bodies, you know, on the bed, or on the ground, on the cemetery. We know that we, our, our, we know we cannot bring our body with us. So who is really going next life? Is consciousness alone is going next life? 
only consciousness going, not you going. Huh? You are not going to the next level. Huh? <laughs> Want to sit in Singapore. <laughs> so, that's why you should not say the consciousness is going to the next life. You should not say, I am going. I am going. Now you should think, I am going, who you are. Right? Who you are. You, is your body is you? No. My body is not me. My consciousness is not me. My organs are not me. Then who you are, where you are exist. In your brain, in your heart, in your legs, where, where you really exist. Think about now. Everybody just think, you know, yes, I am going. For example, all of you come from, you know, your workplace or your home. You come from somewhere to TBC. Because you, when we say somebody is coming, somebody is leaving, we are talking about based on the body. When the body move, we say the person left. When the body come in, we say the person is come in, right? When the you know the, that's why normally we talk about the person based on the body. But when we say the person is going to go to next life, we are not really talking about based on this body. We are talking more the subtle level. Okay, for your question today, when we go to next level, how are we going? Second question, you think where you really exist? Are you exist in this house? Yes, I am exist, right? I am exist. I am in this house. I am in the center. Where you, where you are? I am, am where I am sit. Seated, right? Now just think about now you just, you know, study step by step. Am I in the brain? Right? Where are you? That's why first you know my body is not me. But very interestingly, when somebody touch you, somebody touch your shoulder, shoulder, what say? Oh, he or she touched me, right? But still the shoulder is not you. But somebody touch you, you touch, you, you touch on your shoulder, then you say, oh, he or she touched me. Somebody punch you, say yes. How we say? The shoulder is not you. If somebody touch you on your shoulder, how you can say he or she touched me? You, yeah, you, if, yeah, you can feel it, right? You can feel the uh, contact, but the feeling is not you. That, that's why now we need to know the you know the basis of you the basis of you that means there are five aggregates five aggregates in Harsudara you know at the beginning just mentioned the five aggregates are empty what are they form feelings discrimination and yes, that means you know form, feelings, then discrimination, discrimination or how the pronunciation, discrimination, right? Form, feeling, discrimination, then consciousness, composition factor, then last consciousness. Now look interestingly, so you, within the five, the body is, you know, that was so gross. Then feeling is more subtle. Then composition factor is more subtle. The discrimination, discrimination is more subtle. The consciousness of most of the subtle is within the five aggregates. That means you are basis on five aggregates. Five aggregates is called basis. So you are solely, only depend on the five aggregates. That's why somebody touch your body, you say, somebody touch me. Right? That's why you are just 
the combination of, of five aggregates combined together, then we call, you know, you know, like we can call sentient beings, we can call you know, human being. The being who has a human five, five aggregates, the being who has a you know human five aggregates that we call the being is human being. The being has a you know the cow five aggregates that we call the the being is cow. Mainly you know you know cow or human or non-human we, we can differentiate based on the body, not feeling, no consciousness. So now you need to think about. What is the relationship? What, what, what is the connection, you know, you usually used in the philosophy relationship between you and five aggregates? What is the relationship? How I, you know, only depend on five aggregates? If you think more precisely, then finally you need to think about mind, consciousness. That's why you know, all conditions and phenomena must have a two types of cause and condition, secondary and primary. This means our body is come from our parents. Do you think your consciousness also come from, you know, come from your parents? Huh? Okay. How many of you, how many of you really, how many of you really, how many of you really believe you know, your consciousness not really come from your parents. Not from parents. Is there anybody want to say it's come from parents? Huh? Or some come from parents? Yeah, yeah, you can say, you can say. You know, huh? Not all of karma. Okay, if somebody say, for example, you know, modern science, they really believe there's a not really separate mind and consciousness, you know, there's no separate consciousness and mind, you know, from the brain. Brain. The brain has a certain function. When they, you know, act, the function, they, they, they act, then there's be the name just consciousness. They say there's no separate, you know, brain and consciousness. They believe your your consciousness come from your parents. But we you know we say no no our consciousness not come from parents. Why not? Why not? Never be the same. Never see the same. Okay, then there's a big problem, okay? <laughs> the child really come from parents. Sometimes you can say the ch child is totally, you know, no same as father, no same as a mother. It's totally different from the parents, right? You know, the, sh the color, <coughs> the feature is totally different from parents. Right? You, can, you can see, so, so, that's why in, in U.S., the couples are, you know, the white, uh, People totally white. They had, when they give a birth, the, the child is totally black. Really? You don't you think that the child will come from mom, the mom? Yes, right. Definitely think so. <laughs> so that's why you know. Yeah, you can say this way. You know, my money is not come from my parents because the, the way of thinking me and my parents are big different. My parents are not intelligent, I'm very intelligent. Or you can say, my parents are very intelligent, I'm quite, you know, not intelligent. This, you cannot see similar. Then, where your minds come from? Definitely you feel I have a mind, right? I have a feeling. That's why you can see, you know, the two cells are the substantial cause or primary cause of our body. Right. Then other condition phenomena are my, you know, the secondary cause of my body. The consciousness also. So we have a two types of consciousness generally. One is let's say three, three, you know, types or three level. One is very gross 
level, which is, you know, the eyes, you know, our five, you know, senses. Five senses are very gross. Then there's another, you know, subtle level, perhaps some attachment, anger, compassion, those are more subtle compared with the five senses. Then there's a more subtle mind, for example, you know, the uh, so, for example, it can arise when you have a deep sleeping, very, very deep sleeping. That moment, there's a mind. The mind is very subtle. So, moment of the death, moment of the moment of the death, that time there's a mind is more subtle. That means generally, you know, mind you can divide into three: gross, subtle, very subtle. Now think about what is the substantial cause. Substantial and primary cause are the synonyms. Okay. So what is the substantial cause of your your mind today? Mind. The yesterday minds, you know, was the substantial cause of my today mind, right? Then you go all the way to your mother womb. So when you are in the mother womb, so that, that time you are so little, you're so small, and it's, it's the same as a you know, small particle. That time, also we Buddhists believe this time, there's a consciousness, there's a body. Then, now if you really, you know, need to know about the, there's a, there was a previous life or, life or not, then you need to study in that moment that period of time. And the modern scientists, you know, uh, there's no any, you know, way they can do study, they can do research. That time there's a consciousness or not. Because that time there wasn't brain. Right? Brain de developed, you know, after a few weeks. So that's why, in order to know the previous life and next life, you study, you must, generally you must study you know, primary cause and substantial cause. Then second, you st must study about the substantial cause of mind, primary cause of the mind. Number third, you go more subtle level, just subtly about, you know, what was looked like when you are in, a, in the mother womb. Then slowly you can, you know, trek to the next life. So, you know, the, the dura, the study is so important because it gives you the basic, you know, knowledge about permanent phenomena, impermanent phenomena, why is something impermanent, why something is, you know, permanent. So what is the difference between form, consciousness? So how many types of consciousness we have? So, you know, that means generally you also you can, you can think in you know, the positive consciousness, negative consciousness. You can think about, you know, uh, gross, subtle, very subtle. So this, uh, today we study very little about form and consciousness. The most difficulty for us is so difficult to understand what does mean mind. What does mean mind, right? Mind. That's why mind, consciousness, awareness are synonymous according to Buddhist philosophy. Mind, consciousness, Awareness, lo, sheba, rigba, yeah. Mind, consciousness, awareness. Awareness are synonymous. Why we call mind? Why we call consciousness? Why we call awareness? For example, your eyes consciousness is consciousness. Because it can consciously, you can understand something. When you, you when you use your eye consciousness, you can aware something, right? That's why they, they, those are synonymous. But when we name mind, consciousness, awareness, there's a different reason to name different way. Now, so. Also, we know, at the beginning, you know, we recite the 
uh, all that verses. Then we say, I take refuge to Buddha until I become a Buddha, right? We always believe in Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. You've, in order to have a fully conviction about the Buddha, you must have a fully conviction about positive mind and negative mind. In order to know the positive mind, negative mind, you must know what are the function, what are the function of the positive mind, what are the functions of negative minds. If you know, yeah, this is the function of negative mind, then you can understand when the negative mind function to you, you know, is arise with you, you can feel it's no good. When the positive mind arises within you, when the you know, positive mind is a function to you, you feel it's good. So that's why you know we have to learn about the mind. Without having you know good knowledge about mind, then you cannot have a really you know uh, conviction about your next life, previous life, even though you don't have a strong conviction about becoming Buddha. So I think. So we today stop here. So before we do the dedication prayers, we should have a time for question and answer. Any question, please? Now is your chance to ask. Okay. Oh, so actually, you know, so we should have a one-day class about mind and mental factors. It is so important. The example I can give you, the mind is look like a king. Mental factors are look like the cabinets or ministers. When minister does, you know, ministers do something, they do based on the order by king, right? Without, you know, order of king, the minister cannot do much. That's why the mind is look like a king, the mental factors are look like the minister. For example, according to, you know, Buddhist philosophy, we believe I consciousness is mind, not mental factor. Okay, I consciousness is mind, not mental factor. My, my I consciousness has a, another five mental factors. It has. That means, for example, when, when you look at an object, you just aware the object, aware the object. But when you, at the same time, you, you can differentiate. This is yellow, this is blue, this is black, right? You can differentiate. It differentiates based on the mental factor, not in the, based on the mind. Mind just aware. Mind is look like, you know, like mirror. Mirror, right? Mirror. mirror. Look like. If I show, you can have an image of this picture. If I show this, I can have an image of all of you. It's just aware the object, you know, the object. It doesn't have a really independent function, independent ability to differentiate this and that. When is differentiated based on the mental factors. <coughs> so actually there's a different numbers, 52, 53, 60 plus. Particularly when you study, you know, about mental factor based on the Theravada tradition, this number is more higher. When you study about mental factor based on the, or, you know, Mahayana, or, you know, the uh, Tibetan Buddhist tradition, there's a 52 and 53, the mental factors. Number is 52 or 53. So we, in the, in the future, we must have a one-day class about man and mental factors. We already have a copy, right? Yeah, any question? Okay. The nature of the man is same human being or you know you know animal the nature of the mind is same the quality is big different big different so we we human being has a you know better quality we have a uh, you know better mind than the human uh, animals for example look at simply 
I, I think some of you have a pet, right? Dog or cats. When they, when you give uh, enough food, you know, give food and everything, the, 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 the dogs and the cats are very happy. They play around. They don't have a really worry about tomorrow. They don't have a really worry about next life. They don't have a really regret about some they have done bad things, right? This means their way of thinking is so simple. For example, you know, animal, they, when they eat good food, you know, when they have a good shelter, they are very happy. But we are not. Even though we have, a, you know, good food, good clothes, good house, but we have a lot of worries. Actually, the, the nature of the mind, human and ascendant, all, you know, ascendant beings has the same nature. Same nature, but the quality is big different. Big different. So this I want to say today. So if you want to know really in a deeper level, then you have to learn a little bit about the Vajrayana teaching. Then you can understand more precisely. Any question? Five, uh, uh, for example, feeling, discrimination, and uh, minds, those are mental factors. Mental factors. They are not under the discrimination. Those are we call mental factors. For example, each mind, all minds must have a, you know, the five uh, mental factors. Feeling, discrimination, and uh, con uh, composition factor, then consciousness. So this is not under the discriminate, uh, discriminating, but the all man, all man must have this five. Yes. Formation. The form you said it refers to matter also. Huh? If form, we understand it as matter. Yeah. Like, matter. Like things have weight and take out space are called matter. It, it's not. Matter is, uh, you know, uh, uh, made of, made of five elements, four elements. When we say form, form is made of based on the four elements. So then, you know, when you think about very subtle energy, the subtle energy not really, you know, made of the five, uh, four elements. So these are different, you know, area. You don't have to know this time. Sorry, you said five or four elements? Uh, four. Four, yeah. yeah. Also, yeah, it's important because uh, one of some of Sutra also mentioned the five elements, but they use five elements within the five. It's just the space, space. Also, very interestingly, because it's modern science, they're also talking about the light. When you, you know, it's totally dark. There's no any light. We cannot see any object, right? That's why any, some of the also mentioned, in order to, you know, aware the object, we, for example, uh, we must need the eyes organ, eye consciousness, and the object, and the light. Light. If, even though you have an eyes organ, if you don't have eye consciousness, you cannot see. You have eye organs, you have eye consciousness, is there any other, is there, is there no object? You cannot see the object. Even though you have an eyes organ, you have an eye consciousness, there's an object. If there's no light, you cannot see. That's why some sutras also mention very clearly, in order to aware the object through five senses, you, we must need the light. Yeah. That's why, you know, uh, form always, you know, made of four elements. Also some sutra mention five elements, include space. Okay, so I don't think any more question. So we can, yes. Yeah. Uh, last week you mentioned that, uh, if I didn't remember wrongly, you mentioned that uh, all merits are positive actions, but not all positive actions are merits. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
usually we use you know virtuous action positive action also we can use merit the virtuous action positive action is the meaning is very similar this means simply i'm going to say all you know merits are virtuous action or virtuous positive action clear all positive action virtuous actions are not necessary to be merit merit now he has question what is the difference how you can differentiate you know between you know positive action or virtues and merit so merit we have a uh, two types of merit merit of wisdom merit of methods methods all buddhist practice all practice doesn't matter what kind of practice you you know you have been doing all the practices you can you can include into two practice only practice of methods practice of wisdom all practice for example you know when you do prostration that you fully generate the merit field you have a very strong you know faith and you are doing the you know body action those include into you know into at, at the moment is the positive action not necessary to be merit merit is positive action not merit but but the practice we can we can include include into the methods practice of methods not wisdom then when you you know just try to realize the impermanence you know, when you fully understood the impermanence then you meditate on impermanence for you know few minutes or 10 minutes one hour or two hours that you accumulating merit look you accumulating positive action and this practice we can call practice of wisdom wisdom the main differentiation between merit and, and um, uh, you know virtue is in order to know this you need to know the two kaya dharma kaya rupa kaya that means buddha body right buddha bo- we just say we believe we will be become a buddha in the future when you be we, when you become a buddha you will have a body the the body is not you know dukkha not truth of suffering is no dukkha the body will be which is you have you very pure it is the you know manifestation or you know manifestation of the methods merit so when you able the merit you know the able to transform as a buddha body then you can call this positive action is merit so we have a two practice practice of wisdom practice of with um, uh, methods we have a two achievement you know dhruva kaya and dharma kaya the wisdom merit can be made you know main cause of the dharma kaya the methods merit mainly cause of the rupa kaya is going to be cause of the dharma kaya or rupa kaya then the positive the action can be merit it is not cause to be true of them it's just you know uh, virtues positive action not merit in order to accumulate merit you know the, the pure merit you must generate uh, you know the pure renunciation you must you know realize uh, selflessness or emptiness then you are able to accumulate merit until that that you cannot so you you know uh, that's why you know two practices two achievement now you need to link you know the two merits and true uh, achievement clear okay so we uh, stop here so we do the dedication prayers the next time so we study more precisely about consciousness i think most of you have the the soap copy of dura so you can you can you know it, there's not much only i think 20 pages you can read the the text the text is very nice with the chart who need it i think sonam or paulin can provide the soap copy okay, we can put the facebook right they can download cannot request, request. request. but you simply you can put the facebook it's okay right
Can you? It's quite high and big, huh? Okay, anyway, so if you need the soap copy of the Dura, you can request to so number of Pauline. Request, huh? She said, please. <laughs> okay, so we can do the dedication prayers.